ladies and gentlemen, legends and larrikins, to the very first, the inaugural episode 001 of Off-Roadography. I'm going to say that word again because literally I just made it up. <laughs> Off-Roadography. What's this all about? This is going to be a series of short, small clips dedicated to photography as it relates to the off-road world. Now, I don't think it's a big leap for me to suggest that if you're watching this, you've got an interest in four-wheel drives, camping, fishing, the outdoors in general. And in this day and age, everyone, every man and dog has got some form of camera. And they're trying to, they're trying to take photos of what they're doing out there and then come back and share it with their mates, which I think is bloody fantastic. So I thought, why don't I just make a little corner of the internet dedicated to tips and techniques about photography and getting the very best images so that when you come back from your four-wheel driving trip, your camping trip, your fishing trip, your hunting trip, whatever it might be, and you share those with your mates, well, you make them downright jealous. There's a tree across the track. I'm going to have to go around it. There we go. Folks, this is a really good time for me to remind you that this is a 100% solo project. There's no film crew. There's no editor. There's no producer. There's no sound guy. In fact, there's no idea. There's just me having a crack. So, wish me luck. Let's get parked up and get stuck into episode 001 of Off-Roadography. Okay, what about we start right at the beginning with that one question that I reckon if I had a dollar for every time I could ask this question, well, I reckon I could afford half a 79 series. Bloody expensive, those vehicles, but in all seriousness, I get asked all the time at shows, and social media, on the streets, what camera should I buy? So what better place to start episode 001 of Frodography with what camera should I buy? Now, let's get stuck into it. Okay, along the front here, I've actually got a selection of bits and pieces, and we'll get into each one of these in a minute, because it would be remiss of me to tell you that there is one camera that I use all the time, because there's not. I actually use five cameras. So in the Forby, whenever I go anywhere filming around Australia, I've always got five cameras with me and I'll run you through each one of those in turn. But, yes, I do have a decisive and conclusive answer that I can recommend to everybody out there when it comes to what camera should you buy. And I'll get to that right at the end. But for now, let's start with number one of the five cameras that always live in my Forby. Okay, these bad boys need no introduction. The old GoPro. I own a few of these and I use them all the time for stills as well as for motion. However, for stills, the newest ones, uh, I'm not even sure my newest one is right now, but the newest ones have come a long way when it comes to stills. Some of the images you can get out of these bad boys are fantastic. And what I love about them the most is that they can go into places that you wouldn't put a normal camera. I'm talking you can stick them under the water for water crossings, put them up top of your four wheel drive and get smacked by branches, put them in the way of your tires and get those shots of the mud flicking up. They really are versatile. Are they the only camera I would carry? 100% not. They are not the only camera I would carry, but I do recommend that if you were gonna buy a secondary camera and have something as a second, a backup, you couldn't go too far past a GoPro. That's number one. Okay, let's have a look at number two. Camera number two needs no introduction either. You know what it is, it's a phone. Look folks, in 2018, these things take an amazing photo. They blow me away with how good they are at taking stills photos. Now, this is my old phone. I just bought a new phone, which is currently videoing me. It's sitting on a tripod right there. <laughs> it's got a microphone plugged into it, and it's videoing me. I would take more photos on my phone than I do with all the other cameras I own combined in a year. Phone is something you definitely do not discount. In fact, it has to be up there with my top choice for what camera should you buy. You can do more with a phone today than you ever thought possible. And of course, there's a whole heap of editing apps that you can get so that you can take a photo, edit that bad boy, straight up on Instagram, Facebook, whatever you want to do with it, share it with your friends. The phone, folks, along with, of course, your GoPro, would be the two go-to pieces of kit that I would recommend if you didn't want to actually buy a camera. Those two things will do everything you ever want. Let's move on to number three. Okay then, here we go. Number three, let me just take him out of his little pouch. This is a lens interchangeable mirrorless camera. Super small, super compact, takes amazing video, takes amazing stills. This here has changed, literally changed, the way I look at photography. I've only had it for about two years. 
and I've got to tell you, it is one of the greatest pieces of kit I have ever owned. I'm going to talk about this a little bit more in just a minute, but that is number three. I'm going to pop that down and move on to, well, look at the size of this bloody thing, will you? This here, of course, is number four. Now, you all know what this is. It's a digital SLR camera. These are the lenses for it. Look at this, that big bloody things. I own a whole stack of this equipment. I don't pick this thing up that much anymore, but by goodness, if you want to take the best image quality, I'm not talking good photos, because you can take good photos with anything. I'm talking image quality. Digital SLR will blow everything else out of the water. You do, of course, need to be a bit careful with how you store them. They take up a lot of room. They are big and bulky, and they do take a bit of getting used to in order to work all the functions that come with them. So, that's four out of my five cameras that I travel with at all times. You're wondering, one, two, three, four, where's number five? Number five is right there. That's, of course, everybody seems to have a drone these days. I do too now. Before I had one, I thought, I'm not gonna buy a drone, what am I gonna use that for? But then I got one. Man, am I stoked with the stills that come out of that bad boy right there. It does an amazing job. And it's a bit like owning a GoPro because it can't do everything. But what it does do is allow you to get those images that are really out there. Aerial shots, stuff from places you wouldn't ordinarily get. Stuff that you can't do with any of these other cameras. So yeah, as a fifth, it is a pretty, pretty cool piece of kit. I'm gonna get that one down before it crashes into the tree. Excuse me a second. All right, I was actually quite close. There's trees all around me here, <laughs> but I got it back. Okay, let's answer the question, shall we? What camera should I buy? for off-roadography. Photography on the road in your 4 Sun's just changed, that could be terrible. We'll see how it goes. Folks, out of all these five here, yes, I use all of them at some point during the day when I'm filming for myself, every single one of them. But if you said, Graham, you have to get rid of all these, throw all this out, and you can only keep one. I'm gonna make a choice. And it's the choice that I would recommend to everybody out there personally. I'm not saying it's the best camera here. I'm not saying it's the one that you absolutely should go and buy. You'll never have any problems with it. You can do everything with it. It's the one that I would own if I could only own one of these. Now, it has to be assumed that I still have a phone. Maybe it's an old Nokia. You know, those ones you used to flip open and I can still make phone calls because, of course, you still need to be able to make phone calls. So the phone would not be it. If I could only have one, it would be this one here. These little mirrorless cameras are unbelievable. You can swap the lenses on them. There's a whole range of lenses for them. They are super good quality. They're super lightweight. They're so easy to use. Um, oh, there's just so many pluses and there's very few minuses. Um, one thing I love about these is that when you take a photo, you can upload it directly to your phone, edit it and have it on Instagram or to your mates within seconds. I do it all the time. Check out my Instagram account, uh, Eco Muse Images. You will see a whole range of photos on there that I have literally taken put to the phone, edit it, and put it straight back up into the cloud within minutes. So there you go, folks. Finally, I've given a decisive answer to the question, what camera should I buy for four-wheel drive, off-road, outdoor, camping, hiking, fishing, hunting? I take this thing everywhere. What camera should you buy? Get yourself a small mirrorless. I think they are brilliant. In case you're wondering, of course, this is a Sony 6500. Uh, they have a whole range. The Sony range is smick. They are superb. The lens, the little F4, it's a Zeiss 16 to 70 F4. Again, that lens is tack sharp. It is brilliant. And all that literally can just about fit in my pocket when I go away. Definitely can fit in the glove box. There's nothing negative about it and a lot of positives. That's the answer to that question, folks. Episode 002 is coming up real soon, but I just want to let you know, if you've got any questions at all that you want answered, why don't you drop me a line? Social media platforms are the best place to do that. Jump on my Instagram account or you can go to Facebook. Leave me a message on there and I will try. I get so many messages, folks. I will try and incorporate your question into 002 off-roadography. Folks, catch us out there. Keep snapping. Have a good time doing it. Phew.